about losing. I don't want to lose any game of football in a Celtic jersey at all. I do understand where, like, just say, for example, if we were playing the Champions League, I'm a great believer of uh, resting players before and also after Champions League games. I'm not saying UEFA Cup potentially, but potentially there as well. Because I think their form dips going into the game and going out of the game because lack of focus, etc. If I put out a shadow squad full of teenagers against Motherwell in that game, or we're resting them pre-game before a, a Champions League game, and we lost we lost the game and people were like, oh, for fuck's sake, we lost. I'd probably say to them, listen, I think this is better in the long run. You can't win every game, etc., etc., etc. I do think people, though, are, um, are using the excuse we can't win every game too often now. I think we should be performing much better than we are. I think we have the, the, a good enough squad where we should really be at a stage where we're getting ourselves together and beating teams quite comfortably in, in, the, in the Scottish League. So no, uh, I don't. I don't think it's a good idea to start this uh, lethargy. Regards, oh, it doesn't matter not winning that game. We should really be trying to push ourselves on and winning every game of football we can. And I think it, the supporters have every right to be annoyed when we we lose games. What about you? What are your thoughts on it? I I agree with you 100. percent That's why I, I'm beginning at the beginning to to win eight or nine in a row, lose one, and say, oh my god, the sky is falling. Was really irritating. Looking at it now and seeing like one win out of the last four or five, you look yes. at it and go, what the hell's going on? And, and and it's not necessarily because I believe they deserve to win every game. It's just because I'm really be, not beginning to believe that the right decisions are being made. I think I don't mind losing games when we're displaying a level of consistency. Oh, agreed. Where I, But the thing is, we're not at the moment. You need to get a run of momentum going. If you don't get a, a head of steam and build a level of momentum going into this section of the, of the season, then you're in a dangerous situation where it could not turn right for you. You might have like it might keep on keep on going all the way to Christmas, which is which is pretty poor to be honest with you. So um, no, they need to get their act together. And one of the reasons I think our problem I was going to move move you on to there is I don't think our back four is the problem, and I don't think our striker is the problem. I think Skopovic and Gadetti in the last couple of games have had absolutely nothing to work with at all. I don't think they played particularly well, but I wouldn't really blame them. I think it's a selection of the midfield five, and it technically is a five where it's a two or three. Can we just maybe go through the, the guys who are playing in the, have been playing in these roles and just like evaluate how effective you think they are? Probably the sure. first person I'll bring up is Johansson. Johansson's been playing as part... He's an interesting one because he's played part of the two in the kind of more sitting role. He's also played in Europe as the attacking guy in the middle three at the expense of Commons. See, to be honest with you, I like Johansson. However, I'm struggling to think of 45-minute spell where he's been effective for 45 minutes, where he's just not kind of clocked out the game for at least about a 20-minute, 20 25-minute portion of the game. I, I'm with you there. And, and I think... And, and I'm going to say this: If you compare this time last year to this to uh, to now, as far as Lennon saying he wanted to play that four four two diamond versus what we're doing here as a, as as what uh, Ronnie wants, mm -hmm. there was a time when we were playing, and I and I actually went back and I li listened to some old uh, recordings that we had, or you know, uh, comments or you know, shows that that. Uh, I was on with Graham back in back this time last year and listened to the comments of, hey, you know, if you watch Stokes or if you watch, you know, uh, Sam up front and you're watching all this going on, there's a pass not going through and the guys are pointing the wrong direction and comms is pointing. There's a time in which you take these players and you have to mold them in and you have to get them together. And I think you're doing it. This, this process is going on two years in a row. Now, do I think we'll, we'll score tons of goals? Yeah, I, I don't think that you're going to just hammer, you know, Dundee United, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, or ten, nothing, or whatever, and not think that you can't finish. So the finishing is there. I think this is a matter of time until this starts to work, and especially since if you can tell me Skepovic or 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 Gadetti can play that striker role, that that top, you know, man. That's got to be good for Stokes to be able to be able to find him as in the Stokes Hooper type thing. And then Commons in there also. I, I mean, I, just a matter of time. You know, the whole thing about, you know, the way Skepovic plays, the way Gadetti plays, and being able to find the people, being able to find, get the people to be able to find them. 
I mean, that's just not going to happen in a couple of days or a week or two of training. So, yes. you know, I think it's just a matter of time. For, for me, it is. That's the way I look at it. Okay, right. Well, let's look at it this way. We're going to go, we'll talk about the, the two. If we are resigned to playing this 4 2 3 1, we've had the. Let's talk about the two sitting, sitting players. So far in these roles, we've had Scott Brown, Johansson, Beton, Kyle. Am I missing anyone else? Is that the four that have played in those? No spot. Oh, no, M- no, M- McGregor hasn't played in the sitting role. Oh, okay. Sorry. So it's uh, the kind of more defensive two off the oh, yeah. uh, of the five. So yeah, Mogru in there as well. So Mogru, Kyle, Beaton, Brown, Johansson. Who do you think our best two is in this? In this and uh, what? Do you, what? How do you evaluate all of those players' performances? Uh, all, as you evaluate them, I mean, the the best two you've got to go at this point in time's got to be Johansson because he has the. He has the urgency and Brown because he's just the teeth of that team. Yeah. I mean, it can't be any other way. And that goes back to what we talked about earlier in the show. It, it, do we depend too much on a, you know, on a guy who's what, 28, 29 years old? Yeah. Man, he's even today when he came in, the urgency changed. My thing about that is right. I think you're right. I think that's totally correct. I think Johansson and Brown are the best two players at the moment to, to play in those roles. The only thing is, I don't think Johansson is that player. Well, I think he's the best player to play in that role out of the guys we've got. However, I don't think that's his position. I think his position is further forward. I don't think he has the defensive ability to to really be consistent in that role. I don't think he has the tackling and stuff like that. A lot of other people have really, really came out and said they think he's a great tackler. And I just don't, I don't see him as the ball winner, to be honest with you. Maybe I've, I've played a little bit too much champ manager on this one. I'd I'd probably prefer him a little bit further forward, but then again, you've got so many, so many guys, so many in that forward position to play in the the three like McGregor, Commons, etc. Who are you going to drop out of that to accommodate him? We obviously dropped Commons in the European game and played him there, and he got <laughs> well, he got absolutely slaughtered for it. Yeah, I'd probably see Johansson and Brown playing in those two. What what do you make of uh, Beton and Kyle playing in those roles? I wouldn't have them together, but potentially one of them alongside of Brown. What would you think of that? Uh, yes, one of them, and the other one for a defensive replacement at the end of a European match. Yeah, um, I think I'd probably pick Beton over Kyle. What are your thoughts there? Uh, yeah, I mean it depends. I mean, in, in I mean, listen, Kyle at times can can play like he's what, like he has no head, and Beton's no no different. I mean, he's the one who got the red card, you know, last year Champions League. So, I mean, and he gets some some silly cards too. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah, well, anyway, I'd, I'm not too sure. I think that I'm not sure how much Beton's going to improve over the next six months. If he is going to become the player that kind of hoped he was going to be. I think that Kyle potentially has improved a little bit compared to last season. I don't think he could have got much worse, but I just really don't see any future there for him at all. I think it's time for us to kind of ship him out. I think that we need someone to play alongside Brown in that role at the minute. I'd love to see Johansson and him gel into that partnership, but in this formation, if we're playing this four-two-three-one, I think you're probably looking to to push Johansson a little bit further forward, unless Johansson and, and Brown can kind of gel a little bit and to to look out for those roles. So, yeah, hey, listen, don't forget, you still have you know three three people you know, who need to, four people need to get in that midfield. Yeah, I mean, you still. I mean, where where the hell is Liam Henderson, Liam Henderson been? Yeah, he's just totally disappeared. Yeah, um, I don't know where he's been. James Forrest has still got to get healthy. You yeah, still so, have Picasso in advanced role, and you still have Commons. And you know, uh, what do you do? Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming. And if you go through the rest, Borick, Dear, Birgit, Roger, um, and you saw what a tone have too. Well, Aaron, we'll bring that all together, right? So we've we've picked our midfield, our back, <laughs> our back two of Brown and Johansson for now. Then the three, like you were saying, going forward, you've got Tonev. You've got Wasako, Wakaso, sorry, who both came in. You've got McGregor and Commons, and you've got Forrester, oh yeah, who's out and injured at the minute. Chris Commons, technically Stokes, technically Griffiths, but we'll talk about him a little bit later on. Yeah. So, I mean, who, who are you picking as your three at the minute? I don't think it'd be fair to drop McGregor because I think he's played quite well and I think he looks very lively. Some of his decision making and his passing, not great. I think that he gets to a stage where there seems to be a really frust- uh, a frustration at the minute where. We just keep on passing and passing, 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 and nobody's making the killer pass. McGregor's getting frustrated, r- running towards the edge of the box and just thinking, I can't see the pass. 
if I pass it to someone else right now, they're just going to pass the ball right back to me. And he's just he's just shooting from distance uh, at times when it's not really called for. So he's trying to force it a little bit, but I think that's just being young and just trying to do something quickly. But I can understand his frustration because I just don't see where the killer ball is coming from between these three positions at the minute. I wouldn't really see Commons displaying any, th- any form of vision regards passing. Tonev, I don't really see he's done much at all. And uh, I thought well, Castle was probably the person who stood out for me. He's putting in the most amount of most amount of energy into the performance, but still, I don't really see a killer ball coming at him anytime soon. A couple of questions here. Who would you pick as your three out of all those players? How would you evaluate all the guys that we've mentioned, also putting in Berget as well, who who I are, are failed to mention? If, if I'm talking, if you're going to ask me who are the three that I want in the advanced roles, mm-hmm. it's going to be Commons, Lucaso, and Forrest. I'd probably agree with that at the minute. Uh, I'd play Commons. Hold on. No, I'd well, Castle, Commons, and Forest. Um, I think I would. I think Forest played very well in his um, in the short spell before he got injured again. I think I'd probably rotate McGregor and Forest and uh, keep them fresh. I have one of them coming off the bench with a lot of energy. Uh, I don't know. I just um, if right now, if you said to me. Would you have, in some hypothetical situation, you can have Tony fit for the rest of the season, with Sack or with Castles fit for the rest of the season, or James Forrest fit for the rest of the season, and he'll play every game? I'd take James Forrest. <laughs> oh, of course. I'd, I'd take James Forrest. Oh, and hard. Um, I've not seen enough of Tony and with Castle to really, really make a judgment. I don't think Tony really looks that up for it. Whereas Skipovic and Gadetti and with Castle seem really quite up for it. Uh, with Castle, I really enjoyed his energy in the Ruben Kazan game. I felt he'd done a lot of tracking back, which actually um, makes me think that we could potentially move to a four in midfield, but we'll go back to that later on. I think I think it would be harsh to drop McGregor. I think that Commons isn't playing very well at the minute, but I'd probably prefer him playing in the in a kind of like advanced attacking role, sitting behind the striker, getting in there trying to support him. And then Forrest or McGregor on one side and maybe Wicasso on the other one. Maybe uh, go with the, the all-Scottish contingent of McGregor, Forrest and uh, Commons, but I just can't see um, can't see Ronnie Dyla bringing in Tony and bringing Wicasso and not playing at least one of them in that uh, three attacking role. So, I don't know. I mean, okay, let's go through them individually. Right, what do you make of Tony so far? Of the newbies, uh, he, I don't know, he hasn't really done much. I don't think he's had enough time yet. Right. Uh, I think that's probably Just fair. back from injury, so who knows? Yeah. He's probably not fit yet either. Well, Castles probably came out a little bit stronger than him, especially with getting that goal. Yeah, and, that first goal, yeah. They, I agree. We are both left-footed. Tony F looking a little bit more two-footed than the other two. Potentially, I think Tony F looks a little bit more flexible about maybe playing him central or playing him out on the right. I mean, what have you made of comments at performances so far this year Fuck. oh man he's he, he's been uh just short of what he was last year as of right now as far as finishing and everything else i mean he's who we it's it he's who i'd like to see do really well because i i see him as a quote-unquote Celtic man but i mean he just i mean there's just there's something missing and that's the reason why i went to uh, you know he said this earlier it goes back to there's this procedural issue taking place about them learning to play together. Because, I mean, you just, here's, here's a great example. I, even if you look, and we haven't even mentioned, you know, uh, you know, Charlie yet, even when you talk about Mulgrew, he didn't go from being player of the year two years ago to being to, – he didn't forget how to play. You know, I, yeah. I just I, – there, there's something – as they say the term courses for horses or horses for courses – you know, horses for courses. As you say that term, you look at it and you go, okay, well, are there certain players that fit with the system? The answer is totally yes. You know, it, it just there's just something going on in, in the way this grouping goes that just doesn't seem like it's just working just yet. It's but, it's not, in the words of McStay, it's not gelling. The, um, I mean, you, you've given me filters for being a, a Lee Griffiths fanboy, etc., etc. Now, I'm not going to come out here and say that I want Lee Griffiths in the starting 11. I don't think he should be anywhere near the starting 11 at the minute. 
But one of the things that made me excited about Griffiths when he came to the club was he had two things. One, an engine. 